Hi everyone. So today we're going to be talking about time signatures. Also known as meter signatures. Time signatures and meter signatures designate the pattern in which the pulses or beats are organized. So time signatures and meter signatures uh, designate the pattern in which pulses or beats, we call them the same thing, are organized. Time signatures help us organize rhythm. So when we see 4-4 uh, four, four on the board, we go, oh, that's in this time signature. Uh, time signatures don't have really anything to do with pitch. It's all about rhythm. So let's talk about the anatomy of the time signature. So a typical time signature, one of the most common one, is 4-4 four, four time. There are two parts of a time signature. You have the top number and you have the bottom number. The bottom number tells us what receives the beat or pulse. Like I said, beat and pulse are interchangeable terms. So what receives the beat? The bottom number tells us what receives the beat. The top number tells us how many beats per measure. So let's take a look at the different um, bottom number values. I'm going to use the same top number throughout all of these examples. So let's take a look at 4-4. Four, four. The bottom number, 4, tells us that the quarter note receives the beat and the top number tells us that there are four quarters per measure. Let's take a look at a different time signature, 4-2. The two at the bottom tells us that the half note receives the beat. So again, the two at the bottom tells us that the half note receives the beat, and the top number tells us that there are four halves, four half notes per measure. Let's take a look at one more. Four, eight. Again, I'm just showing these top numbers, so we'll say exactly the same. So. The eight, the eight at the bottom tells us that the eighth note receives the beat. So again, the eight tells us that the eighth note receives the beat. And the top note, the top number will tell us that there are four eighths. Per measure. 
So again, the top number tells us how many beats per measure, and the bottom number tells us what note receives the beat? How are we organizing these rhythms into a measure? Um, before we take a look at different time signatures in action and actual music, we need to go over um, the anatomy of notes. So, this anatomy stays the same in all time signatures. This does not change. This is just the anatomy of notes. So we'll, it all sort of centers around the whole note. So you have a whole note and its counterpart, the whole rest. So up here we have one whole note and one whole rest. In that whole note, sorry, in that whole note, there are two two half notes. or two half rests. Half rests and whole rests look very similar. The way that I was taught um, learning them was a half rest looks like a hat, right? Half, hat, both are H's. Um, and a whole rest looks like a hole in the ground. As you're driving, you got like a hole in the ground. So whole, whole, half, hat kind of thing. Um, any way that you have learned it will work fine. Um, but that's just the way that I learned. So in a whole note, there are two half notes or two half rests. Continuing down, you have quarter notes and quarter rests. Quarter rest looks like a Z and a C kind of thing. In one whole note, there are going to be four quarters. So, in one whole note, there is going to be four quarter notes or quarter rests. In a half note, there are going to be two quarters. There are going to be two quarters in a half, in a half note or half rest as it goes down the line. We also have eighth notes, which look like this, but they also can sometimes look beamed together. So the way this looks, this is one eighth note, one eighth. This is two eighths. So those are eighth notes. As one eighth, which is a little flag, two eighths together usually beam them together. Um, but they also have a. Um, rest attached them. An eighth rest looks like a little, almost like a seven. And in that whole note, centered around that whole note, there are eight eighth notes. Or eight eighth rests in one whole note. So again, it all kind of stems down from the whole note. There's one whole note, uh, and then two half notes, then four quarter notes, then four eighth notes. Um, 
I'll, once we finish this, going over this, I'll put it down in a tree in a graph so you can see it just a little bit easier. Um, and then finally, you have 16th notes, which by themselves look like this. So it's one 16th. It's like, a, it's like a quarter note with two flags, or they're oftentimes being together in four. And instead of one bar, like eighth notes are beamed, it has two bars. And that will be four sixteenth notes. Sixteenth notes also have rest, just like every other note. And a sixteenth note rest looks similar to the eighth note rest, except we add an extra little flag. So they look like that. And in a whole note, there are 16 16th note rests. So it's all kind of centered around the whole note. Take a look at that, study that for a second or two, um, and then I'll show you what it looks like in uh, a tree perspective. I'm only going to show it uh, in the notes, not the rest, but just know that the rest and the notes uh, coincide with each other, right? A whole note coincides with the whole rest. A quarter note coincides with a quarter rest. An eighth note coincides with an eighth rest. They're both the same value. One you just say, one there's silence, right? A quarter note, you say a rest, there's silence, okay? So let me show you what in a rhythmic tree, what it looks like. All this will kind of make sense when I put it in the rhythmic tree. So again, all centered around the quarter note or the uh, whole note. So there's one whole note at the top. Then we divide that into two halves. So again, there are two halves in one whole. Then we divide that into quarter notes. I'm going to space this out just a little bit. It'll make more sense. It'll be better once we... So if you take a look at this, it's a lot easier to see that there are two halves, or sorry, two quarters and one half, right? Two quarters and one half. There are four quarters in one whole note, okay? Now we're going to continue on to looking at eighth notes. I'm going to beam them together in groups of two. So again, looking at this tree as we go on, there are two eighth notes per quarter note. Two eighth notes per quarter note. There are four eighth notes per half. Four eighth notes per half. Does that make sense? Right, because if you, uh, also, if you take a look at it, there's two eighth notes per quarter, and there, therefore a half note is two quarters, so therefore you have to have four eighths. It's like math and ratios. You have to like think about it like that. Yes, music's a lot like math. Um, and then finally, 16th notes and 16th note rests. So like I said, usually 16th notes, we will bar them together in groups of four.
So this is the rhythmic tree, the full rhythmic tree. Um, you can see it's kind of a tree because it all kind of goes up, starts big at the bottom and kind of goes slimmer at the top, just like a normal tree. Um, so you, with a full tree, you can kind of see what I was talking about. There are 16 16th notes in one whole note. There are four 16th notes in two eighth notes. There are four 16th notes in uh, one quarter. There would be eight 16th notes in one half note. So use this rhythmic tree and study it for a second or two um, to look at the, the relationship of notes and rests. Again, these could be rests um, as well. It's just, it, it will look exactly the same, just written out in rest form. Um, this is very important, and this is the anatomy of notes. So no matter what time signature that we are in, this will stay the same. And knowing this helps us formulate how we better uh, write time signatures and how we write uh, music. So using this rhythmic tree and this tree staying up on the board, let's now take a look at time signatures in action. Okay. So we're going to take a back a look at 4-4 four, four time. Um, it's one of the most common times and it's uh, the easiest to teach first. So if we have a 4-4 four, four time signature, if we have a 4-4 four, four time signature, that means that the quarter note gets the beat, so that means the quarter note receives the beat, and that there are four quarters per measure. You can also think of them as four pulses, four beats, same thing. Think of it as four ta's as well. You have to have ta, 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 ta. You have to have four ta's in one measure of four, four. So when writing four, four, we have to have four quarters. So therefore, my measure could look like this. Right? That fulfills the uh, requirements of 4-4. Four, four. There are four quarters per uh, measure. There's also four pulses, four ta's, that kind of thing. That measure is ta, 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 ta. So that bottom ta, there's always four of those uh, downs. I could also write this measure as this way. adding a quarter rests, right? A quarter rest coincides with the quarter note. So there's two quarter, or three quarter notes and then a quarter rest. So it's the same thing. Quart, remember, quarter notes or uh, rest coincides with their note values as well. So this will also equal one quarter. Uh, continuing on with 4-4, four, four, I could also write it like this. Right, when you say you need four quarters in a measure, this only has two quarters. Well, no, it doesn't, right, because you have a half note. So this half note gets two quarter notes. Go back to this rhythmic tree. So this half note gets two quarters. So therefore, you have basically underlying two quarters. Those are, those are uh, equal. So... This is a full measure because the half note equals two quarters. Same thing of I could write my measure just like this with a whole note. That could be one measure. It's all the same. I could also, because uh, this would equal four quarters, right? Because if you look, take a look back at your rhythmic tree, there are four quarters in one half note. I could also write with half rests. And quarter rests. My measure could look like that. 
right? So I have a half rest coincides with half note, quarter note, and then quarter rest. That could be a measure, okay? What we don't want, erase the top. Always check your work whenever you're doing this kind of stuff. Because if we're in 4-4, still a 4-4, we cannot have this. We cannot have this, right? Because you've got a quarter note, which is one. You've got a half rest, which is two. And then you've got a, another half note, which is another two. So therefore, you have five beats. Therefore, you have five beats in this measure. So that does not work out. You have to be able to count your beats. You have to know the this and the rest that go along with it. Um, so it's very important that you that basically memorize this tree. Um, I have a handout I can give to you, um, when you when, uh, during class one day. So let's take a look at... Let's take a look at another different time signature. We're going to stay the same with quarter note receiving the beat, but now we're going to switch to 3-4 time. So that means there are three pulses. Or beats. Per measure. And the quarter note receives the beat or pulse. So my measures look a lot like this. As you can see, there are three quarter notes per measure because the and the quarter note receives the beat so therefore it's one measure could also write like this again a half note equals two quarters half note equals two quarters so one two three make sense cannot write this that is an incorrect measure that's incorrect measure because there are four beats in that measure. So you're going to have to change one of them. And now it would be good, right? You cannot have four beats in three, four. You have to have three beats per measure. Um, a special thing that happens in three, four, and the other one we're going to look at in two, four, are whole rests. So in three, four time, there is not one singular way to write uh, a whole measure of rest. To do that, you would have to write it like this. You would have to write it as a half rest and then a quarter rest. And frankly, that just looks a little odd, um, and it's not normal in music. Um, so what we do instead is... If the, entire, if the entire measure is a rest, meaning there are no singing or chanting of rhythm in that uh, measure, then we put a whole rest there. So a whole rest in 3-4 time, and also we're going to take a look at 2-4 time a little bit after this, means that there... The entire measure is a rest. There is no sound happening during that measure. Um, so let's take a look at 2-4. 2-4. Again, the quarter note is receiving the quarter note is receiving the beat. Corner receives the beat or the pulse, and the uh, the 
the top number tells us that there are two beats or pulses per measure. So a basic 2-2 two, two, or 2-4 two, uh, time signature looks like this, right? Just two quarters. Could also look like this. Sorry, that was a bad one. <laughs> look like this. Could also look like this. Right, remembering that our eighth notes, there are two eighth notes and a quarter. So this equals one quarter, this equals one quarter. Therefore, we have one full measure. Okay. Uh, like I said previously, I guess previously in two, four time, if the entire measure is a rest, if the entire measure rests, there is no sound happening in that measure. We write it as a whole rest. Even though in 2-4 you can use a half rest to, tell, to say that uh, there is rest happening in this measure, it is more common practice to write it as a whole rest. So if the entire measure is a rest in 2-4, 3-4, 4-4, 5-4, 6-4, 7-4, that kind of thing, no matter what, if the entire measure is a rest, you'll use a whole rest. If no sound happens in that measure, you use a whole rest to designate um, uh, designate that it's a, a full measure of not singing. Um, to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about as well, if we take a look at an, an obscure time signature, take a look at 6-4. It's not very common times you're going to be singing. Again, this tells us that the quarter note, the quarter note receives the beat or the pulse. And the top number tells us uh, how many beats. So this means, therefore, in this case, six beats or pulses per measure. Again, to illustrate the point about whole rests and their usage, I could write this whole rest and then write uh, a 16th note bar and then a quarter. Because again, remember that four sixteenths equal one quarter. So this could work. This is fine, right? Because this equals four beats, whole rest equals four beats. Then we've got one beat here and then one beat here. Um, but in six four, if I wanted the entire measure to be a rest, I would just write a whole rest. That means that nothing is going on in that measure. There is no sound happening there. Even though there's not enough beats in there, if I just put that, that tells me that there is no sound happening. Um, that concludes our, um, our lesson on time signatures. Um, there is a quiz on Google Classroom that you'll have to take. It's just a reading comprehension um, that kind of just uh, trying to gauge your understanding of what happened here. If you, you can retake it, so take as many times as you need to. It's all just about reading comprehension um, and how well you understood what went over um, with this. Other than that, uh, if you have any questions, come see me during power lunch or something like that, and I'll be happy to help them. Thank you.